Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Irish Vanita. There are more than millions of people seeking for employment across the globe per day. But the fact is that many of us are still not aware of how to prepare a proper CV to acquire a desired job position in the job market. The CV is a tool that sells your talents at a glance. Therefore, it is vital to pay detailed attention in writing a CV. By the way, today I have a versatile personality with me too explain you about how to prepare a proper outstanding CV. She's a director of a company. Moreover, she is a motivational speaker. She had been living in the United States of America for 28 years. Later, she returned to Ireland. In 2004, she established an education institute named BNB Nursing Limited for casting healthcare professionals. More than 1200 health professionals have completed various courses under BNB Nursing Limited over the years and working across Ireland and other countries. On behalf of Irish Varada viewers, I welcome Margaret to the show. Thank you, Sam, for inviting me to Irish Juanita. I hope I live up to your introduction. Over the years, we have seen the same mistakes over and over again in the cover letters and in the CVs. Today, I will discuss with you um, what those mistakes are and how we can write proper cover letters and CVs. Since our expertise is in the healthcare area, um, we will be focusing on people writing CVs for the healthcare area. But the same format applies no matter what job you're applying for or what area of expertise you're in. The benefits of working in healthcare are flexibility, good wages, secure employment. And that is so important when you have families that you need to provide for. Mm. Now, I'm going to give you some tips on writing a cover letter. Tip number one, whenever you apply for a job by email, you must provide the job description or the code on the subject line. When you're sending your email, the body of the email must be your cover letter. From my experience, many people send their cover letter as attachment. That is not correct. As I've said, the body of your email is your cover letter. In this, you must communicate what your skills are, an outline maybe of your experience, what your strengths are. You must catch the employer's attention in that short email. Now, let's see how to start a cover letter. I've seen many emails starting, Dear Sir or Madam. That's definitely not correct. You need to carry out research. You need to get Google information about where you're applying for the job or simply call them. Ask either for the um, human resources or the director of nursing. Get the name of the person and address your email to that person. For example, you would write, if the person's name is Anne Jones, if she's the director of nursing, you would address your email, dear Miss Jones, not dear sir or madam. Just to focus a little bit more on this, you would not use the person's first name. You would use their status, for example, Miss, capital M with a small s, dot, space, Jones. You do not write Dear Jones, you write Dear Miss Jones. Or if he's a gentleman, you would write Dear Mr. Murphy. You need to gain the employer's attention in this email, in this cover letter, so that he's going to be interested enough to read your email and not just put it in the trash bin. Focus on your strengths, your skills, and the experience you have in that particular field. Do not say, I'm attaching my CV, please do the needful. You never use that phrase. Instead, for example, you can say, I'm attaching my CV, full stop, looking forward to hearing from you. At the end of your email, you need to be very careful about what you write because I know that different countries have different customs and different ways of doing things. Um, in Ireland, 
you will end it. Kind regards, capital K, small r for regards, and your name. And please do not put, um, for example, Mr. John Murphy at the end. You will put simply John Murphy. Do not ever, ever put Mr. or Miss in front of your name when you're writing a letter like this. Now, that's a short description of how to write a cover letter. Now, we're moving on to CVs. Tip number one. Your CV needs to be short, concise, relevant, and no more than two pages long. It needs to be well written, edited, and sells you at a glance. A busy hiring manager spends less than one minute reading it. So if it has excessive, unrelated information, it's going to go in the bin. So perhaps it would be important that maybe somebody else would look at your CV before you send it off. Tip number two, how to flavor your CV to impress a busy hiring manager. As you can see from our CV up here, at the top, you put your name, your address, your phone number, and your email, all at the left-hand side at the top. At the right-hand side, you put a current passport size photograph of yourself. You do not put your date of birth, your PPS number, or your passport number on it. Data protection forbids anybody asking for that without you being offered the job. I've seen many times people from countries outside of Ireland and perhaps even outside of Europe, they will put their passport number, um, all their information on it, their mother's maiden name, their father's name, a whole lot of information that's not needed. Do not put this on there. In your CV, if you're applying for a job in a healthcare setting, for example, a doctor, a nurse, a physiotherapist, occupational therapist, speech therapy, social worker, care assistant, anything, use keywords in your CV, for example, infection control, challenging behavior, promoting dignity, privacy, respect, teamwork, initiative, dependability. I would use those keywords in my CV. Otherwise, the busy manager will not continue reading your CV. Tip number four, start with your latest employment details. In case your employment history does not match the new job you're applying for, make sure you mention the keywords that suit and support the new job. For example, if you worked as a manager in a supermarket, you would focus on communication skills. You would focus on interpersonal skills. Uh, you would mention that you supervised the staff. You would mention that you were responsible for the rota. You would not focus on how well the, stock, the shelves were stocked. For example, a salesperson applying for a job in healthcare would not focus on his sales ability. Uh, rather, they would mention communication skills, self-discipline, grooming, and of course, health and safety. Only write what's relevant to the job you're applying for now, keeping in mind that you have only two pages to write on. I've seen CVs where they wrote about working in the local shop when they went to school. We don't need to know that. That completes this particular area of your CV. Next, we will discuss educational qualifications. For example, if you're applying for a job as a care assistant, you need to clearly outline 
what your qualifications are and what modules you completed. It's also very important to clearly state any other qualifications you received. For example, if you have a certificate in manual handling and patient moving, if you completed some modules on the HSA website or the HSE website. If you're in Ireland with a foreign qualification, you need to check with the relevant bodies what level your qualifications are at in Ireland. For example, you can go to NFQ and see what your qualifications are equivalent to here, what level. If you're a nurse, you will go to NMBI and check and register with them. Whatever your area is, you need to check with the relevant bodies. Tip number six, achievements are upskilling. A few examples might be for achievements. You got employee of the year. You're involved in voluntary bodies like fundraising for charity. Other areas perhaps would be upskilling extra modules that you've taken to upskill. Tip number seven, additional skills. But please make sure they're relevant to the job again that you're applying for. Um, languages. How many languages do you speak? And speak them clearly. Can you write them? Um, IT skills. That's so important in every job nowadays have excellent IT skills. IT skills, for example, CRM, um, what programs you can use. One other thing I would mention is a driving license. If you have a driving license, please mention it. The last area we're going to discuss are references. You really need to have two references on your CV. But because of that, the new data protection laws. Some people just put references available on request. And one tip, if you're putting somebody's name as a reference, please, please ensure that you have their permission before submitting that name. Just a reminder, one of your references must be from your last employer. When you do receive permission, from your last employer, the information must be in this format. I hope you have found this session helpful and I wish you the very best in whatever area, whatever job you're applying for. Best of luck. Shlanta. Thank you very much, Margaret, for your valuable inputs for writing a proper CV. I think you have outlined each and every corner of the CV in detail. And once again, to recollect the points what she explained, let me read out for you tip number one. Your CV should be short, concise, and not more than two pages. Tip number two, how to flavor your CV to impress your busy hiring manager. And tip number three, career objective. And tip number four, employment history. And tip number five, education qualification. Tip number six, achievements and upskilling. Tip number seven, additional skills. And the last but not the least, tip number eight, references. Thank you all for viewing our presentation and see you again. Good luck.